So we have made over 30 videos in this series, and in every intro, I mentioned that we're eventually going to talk about podcasting and podcast. Well, guess what? Today we finally will. I was just listening to a guy on a podcast. He called you insane. Hey, everybody. I'm Saul Colt, the host of the License to Print Money show, powered by Spreadshop. The goal of the show for as long as they let me do it is to show creative people how to make money from their creative life. So I hope you've subscribed already and, and you know, you've smashed that bell um, and, and, you know, get notified because every Tuesday and Friday we come to you uh, with, you know, ways to generate income from your creative life. Everything from growing audiences, the nuances of each platform, launching a podcast like we're doing today, and most importantly, the secret to selling merch. So speaking of merch, the show is sponsored by Spreadshop. Ah, Spreadshop. I personally have had a Spreadshop for over a decade, and in my opinion, they're the very best online solution for selling all kinds of merch, like clothing, bags, and all sorts of stuff. You know, I, I love them. I can't say enough about them. I think they're the greatest thing in the world. Um, but, you know, if you want an actual proper ad read, I'll do that later in the video. So let's talk about podcast. A podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. Hey, everybody, it's me. It's your friend, um, your YouTube best friend, Saul, who happens to also be your podcasting best friend. You know, what makes me your podcasting best friend? Well, I have built three top 50 podcasts for brands and have had a podcast um, of my own that got a lot of attention. Um, and, you know, like I... I I think I, I my, my secret has been that I've I've always had a decent skill of pulling cool guests. You gotta be my podcast. But so with five hundred or more uh, podcast episodes under my belt, either as host or producer, I can boast that I know a few things about this subject. And um, I'm going to share a lot of my experience over the next few episodes. But today. I want to start by going into detail on some of the common mistakes I see people make uh, when they decide to, to start a podcast, whether it be for fun or profit. So, um, the you know, the biggest mistake, mistake number one, top of the list is lack of long term vision and dedication. Why are we doing this again? There are many reasons to launch a podcast. For some, it's just a, the you know an audio version of their YouTube content. Others will do something completely original, but the key is to have a plan and a long-term vision. When I launched my, uh, my personal podcast, it was at the beginning of the pandemic and I wanted an excuse to interview people I admired. I'm trying to tell you how much I admire you and your pretty wife. Setting clear goals, both short-term and long-term, is very vital. Podcasting is a lot of work. So if, you, um, if you're clear with why you're doing it, it makes it feel a little bit less of a grind. It's a grind, I'll tell you. Another way to make it enjoyable is to make it about something you actually care about. Wow, <laughs> Porsche. Girls must love this. That could be comedy. It could be stamp collecting. It doesn't matter what your topic is. There are people for every topic. But... Without a clear focus, your podcast is likely to meander and fail uh, to, to really captivate the heart of listeners. And, and additionally, you won't be able to effectively mark your market your show to building a strong following if you can't even describe what your show's about. To avoid these pitfalls, take time to clearly define your purpose and target audience before you start recording. By doing so, you'll set yourself up for success and ensure that your podcast has the best chance of resonating with listeners. You know, most people make the mistake of just thinking about what people want. Instead, find out what your audience actually wants and create content for them. I say this all the time. A good way to do this is by finding common questions your audience is asking, you know, whether it be on Q&A sites like Quora, Facebook groups, you know, even Reddit. And, and other online communities and, and then just, you know, giving them what they want. You know, a listen and respond approach is better than just doing what you think people are going to love as an individual unless you just really want to put out a vanity project. Mistake number two, <clears throat> poor time management. And, and you got to practice, 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 you know. Producing a top quality podcast episode takes time and dedication. If you're doing interviews, make sure you book people in advance and do your research. 
Poor time management can lead to bad interviews, rushed editing, and, and even, you know, sometimes really crappy audio. I can't hear you. Plan your content well in advance to streamline the creation process. You know, also, it's, you know, I, I say this all the time. It's important to practice. And what I mean is do practice shows. Before launching my podcast, I made three fully produced shows as a practice to make sure we had a good formula and also to judge how long the entire production process would take. In my case, one of the shows was really bad and it wasn't used. It was basically just thrown out. But the other two were kept as emergency show emergency shows for when a guest canceled at the last minute or if we missed a deadline on a new episode. Um, it's really important to, to think ahead. Um, another mistake people make is lack of consistency. We say this over and over and over. Uh, consistency is the key to building an audience. Plan your podcast schedule and stick to it. I went two years and never missed a Tuesday release. You know, the show is on hiatus now because they don't have time to do it properly. Um, but, you know, the thing you have to remember is podcasts are very, very personal. The majority are listened to in a car or in headphones. It is intimate. It was so intimate. Like we were already lovers. Your listeners will know when new shows should drop and, you know, they know what to expect. So don't rush episodes. Instead, focus on quality and set standards for your content. Um, you know, but again, I say... One tip, work on shows in advance so you're never caught editing the most recent episodes on drop day. Uh, another mistake is, man, boring or not sharp enough content. Um, I hope we've never been accused of being boring on this show, but... Boring, right? I'm so boring. Um, your content should never be boring. You know, conduct thorough research, create a script and an outline. For this show you're watching right now, I make a script for the outro and the intro and everything in between are just bullet points so I don't miss a point and get distracted, but I do like to just talk off the top of my head. So I never got to go over my cool bullet points because of the fart gag joke. Your episodes need structure. Think of it like a TV show with a two or three segments or an intro and an, in, an intro, an interview and an outro. This ensures that your content engages your audience from start to finish. And remember, always add value or entertainment and always, always, always be prepared. Unpreparedness, I don't know if that's a real word, but I practiced it, is one of the most common podcasting mistakes and it's inexcusable. Maybe you forgot to do your research on the guest and you asked them unrelated questions. Perhaps you didn't plan out your topics you wanted to discuss ahead of time, leading to an aimless conversation. Whatever the case may be, being unprepared is a surefire way to waste an opportunity and a good way to get a reputation as someone you should not bother being a guest on their show for. Plan out your discussions, brush up on your guests, and listen back to previous episodes so you can learn from your own mistakes too. Taking the time to prepare, um, you can ensure that your podcast is always of the highest quality. You know, another thing that, that people suffer from is lack of patience. Patience is the name of the game. Don't expect instant results, you know, unless you're Dax Shepard or, or, you know, I don't know. Podcasting is a long journey. And the main reason people quit is because things don't happen quickly. You know, it's it's kind of like setting unrealistic expectations from your, for yourself. You know, unrealistic expectations can hinder your podcasting journey. It's unlikely that you'll have a massive audience from the start and monetization can be challenging. So focus on delivering value, producing at least 50 episodes a year and creating a podcast monetization strategy. The truth is the top 2% of shows make the majority of the money, the Joe Rogans, etc. But there's still money to be made in podcasting if you do it well and you do it very niche. And, and you know, when I say niche, as a podcaster, one of the most important things you can do is promote your show. He, he had a podcast. It was about, um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure what it was about, but it, 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 like jazz and economics. Promote, 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 promote. 
it will be very difficult to attract new listeners and grow your audience if you're not promoting. One of the biggest podcasting mistakes you can make is to publish episodes without thinking about promotion. There are a number of ways to promote your podcast, and it's important to find the methods that work best for you. You know, one way to promote your podcast, obviously, is through social media. Share links to your episodes on, you know, Twitter, X, whatever, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, you know, but be sure to use hashtags to, to reach a wider audience. You can also post about your podcast on relevant forums and online communities, even leverage SEO, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but again, this is shows how valuable it is to have a house email list and make sure everybody knows that what you're doing and why you should listen. Um, you know, in addition, you can always reach out to bloggers and influencers in your niche and ask them for collaborations where you can offer value in exchange for them, you know, shouting out your show, you know, with a little or a lot of effort, you can significantly increase the reach of your podcast. Uh, another mistake is focus on yourself instead of your listeners. You know, my podcast was, is just about people I find interesting. Um, but, you know, it's not really about focusing on myself. And, and, you know, while it's important to be confident and engaging, your podcast should be about providing value to your listeners. This means talking about topics they're interested in and relevant to them and not just topics that you find personally compelling unless, you know, you have... You, you know, your finger on the heartbeat of what's cool. Uh, it also means structuring your episodes in a way that is easy to follow and digest and not just rambling on a stream of conscious style, something that I might be doing right now. Life has no point. It's over. You're basically dead. Blah, 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 blah. And you think maybe I have the answer. If you want people to keep tuning in week after week, you need to make sure that you're always keeping your needs top of mind. Their needs top of mind, excuse me. This is why I, I outlined it and, and thing. Otherwise, they'll quickly lose interest and move on to something else, you know. Uh, and, you know, if you, if you land a great guest and you have people, a mistake that's often made not only in podcasts but TV interviews and all sorts of things is talking over your guest or co-host. This can happen if you get excited about a topic and start speaking quickly or if you're trying to make a point and cut off the other person in the process – but man, you know, not only is it rude to talk over someone, it can also disrupt the flow of the conversation, make it difficult for listeners to follow along or even, you know, hear what's going on. And if you find yourself talking over somebody, just take a breath, slow down your speech. You know, another helpful tip is let the other person finish their thought before chiming in uh, with your own comments. You know, bite your lip if you need to. It's like something to stop you. Um by being aware of this potential mistake, you can avoid it and ensure smooth, enjoyable conversations on your podcast. So we're almost done. You've made it this far. You know, let's see it through. Um, another mistake is making it difficult to find and subscribe. One of the biggest podcasting mistakes you can make is making it difficult for people to find and subscribe to your podcast. If people can't easily find your podcast in their favorite podcast directory or app, they're likely to give it up and move on to something else. I always created um, my own URL for the podcast. It, it, it was Saul Talks. I think it might be down now. I'll fix that. But I would just give that URL to people and tell them to go. And it just redirected to uh, Apple Podcasts. Make sure your podcast is easy to find, including all necessary uh, information on your show notes and, and all that stuff. And, and, you know, always promote your podcast across social media and other platforms uh, so people, you know, make it easy. Put a, a link in your email uh, signature. Make it everywhere. You know, by taking these steps, you'll improve your chances of building a loyal audience for your podcast. Um, and I think this is my last mistake or whatever, but um, you got to invest in good podcasting gear and record in a in a reasonably quiet location, a quality microphone. You know, uh, soundproofing can make a difference, but you don't have to go that far if you're not that into it. Um, but it's so important to have high quality. Um, so okay, so there, there you have it. This is the first of a few episodes on podcasting because there's still a ton to cover. Come back next week. Tell your friends to check us out too. And, you know, also make sure you check out Spreadshop. You know, what is Spreadshop? Well, by now I hope you know, um, but in case you don't, Spreadshop is the ultimate solution for creating and selling customer merchandise, custom merchandise online. 
Spreadshop offers an extensive range of high quality products, including t-shirts, hats, you know, bags, hoodies, all sorts of things. Simply upload your designs and Spreadshop takes care of all the heavy lifting. No need to worry about production, inventory, or fulfillment. Visit www.spreadshop.com today and tell them Saul sent you. And also, as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips to fuel your creative success. And, you know, until next time, you know, keep podcasting. We should have a podcast or something. <laughs>